My children are outside on the playground, so I have a few minutes, and I thought I would take a moment and make a video for everyone, because everybody's been asking for more videos. And today I thought I would talk about corals and flow. I've had a lot of people ask about that. And so, um, this is the way I do things. I'll say that again. Um, I've said it in a couple other videos. There's a lot of way to do, ways to do things. I like minimum equipment in my display tank. That's why I have my heater in my um, filter. I got a big enough filter to put my heater in, so I have minimum amount of um, things that make water movement and um, equipment in my tank. And um, once you set your rocks up, when you're setting up your tank and you put your sand in and you're cycling your tank, you put in your um, wave makers or your um, you know power heads and things like that, and you start your flow pattern. And you don't want any dead spots in your aquarium because you can end up with maybe a lot of detritus building up in the corners or under rocks. And so, um, and you have to think about what corals you want. Some like a lot of flow, some don't like a lot of flow. And so basically what I have in this tank, you can do it a lot of different ways, but I have a power head. This is a high door, I think, power head. Sorry, my glass needs scraping. Um, I clean my tank tomorrow, but there's a high door power head it is pointed kind of from the top corner in the right hand corner down towards the back of the left hand corner um, making water flow behind my rocks and um, if I put some food in there you'd be able to see that it blows it down to the back corner the lower back corner back down here where there's a lot not very much flow at all I have a little watchman goby um, and some of the water flow also comes in in between um, the, the rocks here too as well but it, it goes diagonal from that top corner there all the way down to this back corner here and so that takes care of anything any dead spots um, or places where there's no water movement not much water movement behind I also have my um, aqua clear filter that's positioned smack in the middle I don't know if you can see that smack in the middle of the 20 long and I did that because I have a valley the way I set up my rocks is I have um, a valley kind of like there's two 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 major um, structures there that one and that one and in between them is this little valley and um, so I put that smack in the middle so that I would get some good water movement um, in, in that valley and that there wouldn't be any dead spots and it hits the front of the glass it comes out of the um, aqua clear and hits the front of the glass and I don't know if um, you can see but I have um, a ganga pour in the front which likes a good bit of water movement so it gets water movement from that where the water hits the front of the glass and kinda spreads and also um, gorgonians I have lots of several different kinds of gorgonians in here and they need water flow as well or else they build up algae on 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 them so you can see these blowing around here these grow I have to trim them a lot they grow like crazy this is a groobs gorgonian this one's right here in the middle of the valley so they get blown on there that that one back there it gets the flow from that filth that one back there and then I have my last water movement thing in here is this little adjustable one and um, there's Gorgonians in front of him, kind of where, um, but I have that one bl blowing from that back corner across diagonally to the front right corner. And I have that one because I know that my highlight corals that I was putting on the top of my rocks, um, they like more flow. The stonier corals, the bird's nests, the poslaporas, the styloporas, the things that I would put in this tank though I don't have anything that needs incredibly high light they still like a lot of water flow so you can see that that's kinda like going across diagonally to this front right corner and that flow hits that um, aqua clear filter flow and kinda disperses it all crazy and um, all across the top and where I don't have a, a lot of flow but there is flow is that one blowing from the back corner to this one and then it kinda wraps it around the front it has a very low flow pattern coming around here and the things that don't like a lot of flow um, are your mushrooms and they don't like a lot of light either so they're down low so I have my mushrooms my um, recordias 
and those down low where they have low light, low flow, and um, there's a Blastomusa, and another crazy, I don't know what kind of mushroom that one is. It's never divided or anything, but I really don't know what that is. It came on a rock. But um, anyway, so I kind of have my rush mushrooms and Recordia down low, um, and the, you know, ones that like the flow, like these Poslaporas like flow, they're smack in front of the flow. That bird's nest would get a lot of, um, that's back behind the Poslapora there. It would get a lot of algae caught on its branches and in its branches if you didn't have flow um, hitting it um, pretty well. Same with these as a Stylophora there, and that one is a bird, uh, bird of uh, paradise um, bird's nest. Needs flow, so that's going over all those and then over here um, the filter is making that Duncan blow really well and these two style forests here and this bird's nest so it doesn't get a buildup of algae on it and this it's a little deader back here the, the by then the flows kind of dispersed so here is some um, two different kinds of pipe organ ones closed up right now but they're both the top one is a white the one below that is white with green centers. Um, this pipe over here likes a good bit of flow, so it's kind of blowing around um, behind him. I don't know if you can see that back behind that pipe organ is, um, I think, a green slimer. Yeah, that's a green slimer. And um, there's a sponge there that grew where it doesn't get a lot of flow. Um, there's a leg of Mr. Stripey Legs, my uh, serpent star, right there. My fish are still... They like to um, kind of host that valley where the water flows through, and um, they're kind of killing those pallies there, um, nipping at them lately. But anyways, this is the, the flow pattern in this 20 long, and the way I have it set up, like I said, you can set it up all different ways, but I don't change flow just for a coral. Oh gee, my coral is so unhappy. Let me get a power hit and, you know, another one and add it and another one and add it. I set up the flow pattern to begin with and I do mess with it some, but then place the corals according to the way I have it set up so that there's no dead spots. So that I'm not constantly messing with the flow pattern. I've actually messed with the flow pattern before and then had corals start to die because they were used to the way that it was before. And so basically, in the tanks I set up now, I just set up the flow pattern, how it makes it so that there's no dead spots, and then place the corals according to. Um, as far as corals, people have talked about my coral placements and stuff. You know, I try not to put two corals of the same color together unless I have to in order to make them happy. So that way you have a lot of, you know, there's no two pinks basically right stuck next to each other, no two greens um, are two same color greens. I know that's silly, kind of like a woman thing, you know, the, the, the way that we decorate our tanks and stuff, but to spread out the color throughout the tank. And also, um, another tip in trying to get your tank to look good is to always have where your um, rocks meet the sand to have something covering the rock. You know, so like, um, you know, that little recordia there is on a free rock. If I pulled that away, there, you could see rock, and I push that up against there so that the corals flow down into the sand. You know, um, like um, there's always a coral um, at the bottom of each rock structure there so that it flows down and covers up into the, you know, into the sand and makes it all flow in together nicely and um, come together nicely. But anyways, I just today I thought I would answer some questions about my the way I have my flow pattern set up in this tank and um, kind of show the corals that I have in here and why. Um, I chose these corals. Um, if you're going to set up a tank and you decide what corals that you want in your tank, you know, according to your lighting and everything, you know, you need to stick stick with it because, you know, all of a sudden if I say, oh, I love this one kind of coral and it needs stronger light than I have, oh, I'll just try it and stick it in here. You know, it's going to die. So, you know, the tank looks so great because I haven't put corals in here that need more than what this tank can give it. Um, I'd be like sticking a mandarin fish in here. It would be not very smart because it doesn't have what it takes to support a mandarin fish. You know, putting um, some of the harder aquapores and and um, different ones in here, I'd, be, I'd just be, be asking for disaster. So to pick the 
corals that would grow easily in this tank. It's a shallow tank. It doesn't have the most powerful lights on it, but it can sustain easy, you know, bird's nests. So that's that's probably the hardest corals I put in here are, you know, my, my bird's nest and my um, possipores and the stylophores. They need the most light, so they're at the top. And I wouldn't try and put anything in here that I don't have the light or the water flow to sustain. And so the corals do good. I pick corals that will do good in the kind of tank um, that I have set up with the lighting and everything. So, but anyways, um, I hope this helps answer some questions for some people and um, encourages them to try and set up a simple tank and just um, understand about the flow patterns and try and not have dead spots. Um, a good way to find out once you put your um, power heads in is to drop a few flakes of food in there and watch them float around and where they go um, with your power heads running and see what flow pattern you kind of have going on in there and where your dead spots are and, and get the flow pattern going the way you want it and then start adding your corals and um, I hope everybody has a good day and happy reefing.